Hey, it's Mike from Game World Engineer, and today we've got a new update to Godot. There's a new dev snapshot 4.3 dev 5 to the upcoming version of Godot 4.3. So they've released dev 5 snapshot with some more changes that were done. Uh, the, just before they head to the game developers conference next week. So they said next week uh, the development pace will slow a little bit because many of the core developers are taking a vacation after GDC as well. So that's um, this one will be maybe the, the last update for a couple of weeks at least, a few weeks maybe. So they have released the highlights. These are changes since the Dev 4 snapshot. So I just wanted to highlight a few of these that um, came to mind. And if you want to see all of the changes, there's the change log for 4.3 Dev 5. There's 279 changes since the last release, uh, which is maybe half the amount of changes that Dev 4 had. But still, there's some in good changes in here. So let's take a look at them. So the first one is they've added a uh, folder and browse browse folder and file icons so um, they, they're just adding the this little folder icon to the create folder and browse buttons so that one's a, a little change and some extra icons here in the browse uh, dialogues that, that uh, Godot has so that's a, that's a minor change Next, we have allow easily renaming multiple nodes. So right now you have to use a batch rename. You have to right click and select batch rename and put in like a regular expression or a search and replace expression. But now they're going to, add, they've added this feature where you just select them and then click on one of them and then you can, it will automatically rename them based on, a, on this pattern that it's using. So makes it more easier to uh, rename multiple nodes at the same time. Next we have uh, allow LSP to process multiple messages per poll. So currently if you're using an external editor that uses Godot's LSP server and the LSP is used for code completion and IntelliSense and it, it's the red squigglies that you get when you have an error. So currently using an external editor, possibly VS Code, it lags behind. So you see that the red squiggly lags behind your typing. So they put in a fix to, to fix that issue in here. So, And if you want to know what a, an LSP is, it's the language server protocol that Microsoft has. It's open source. And it's the protocol used between an editor or IDE and a language server that provides features to like autocomplete, go to definition, find all references, etc. So it, it's it's how the IntelliSense works basically in code completion. Next, we have automatically create folder and project manager create and import. So this one currently you have to create the folder using this button. Uh, using a create folder button, but um, they're they're changing the button. So currently, if we go into the create new project dialog when you're creating a project, you put in your project name, you put in your project path, and it says this selected path is not empty. Choose choosing an empty folder is highly recommended. So you have to come up here and say create folder. Then it creates the folder, and that message goes away. So this change is they're going to change that button to an on off switch. So when you have it enabled, it'll automatically create uh, the folder. So it will, you don't have to get it to, it'll generate a name for it, new game project, and it will generate a folder automatically. So it makes it easier when you're creating new projects as I find it a little bit confusing. I always found it a little bit confusing. You had to go and manually create that folder, you're clicking that button. So I think that will help. Um, the, which is funny because this one, add folder create icon to the project dialog. So currently, that one doesn't exist. But currently, this is the button. 
they're adding they're adding an icon to it but it conflicts with this pull with this change that where they've changed the button into a, a an on off switch so something to want uh, to consider when doing open source is that you might make a change and then someone else will come along and make that make a different change and your change might go might not stick around this one looks like it's being replaced by that other one by the other one and i guess it's up to the manager of the project to merge which one they want so in this case i, I think they are going with the the switch to on off switch but these things can change in these developer uh, previews as well. So uh, the next change is at, to add a new Parallax 2D node. So they're changing the Parallax background and Parallax layer uh, nodes. They're replacing those two nodes with Parallax 2D. So you'll be able to do the same thing. And it's more performant as well. And it can be used inside or outside a canvas layer can be modified and transformed with non-parallax textures and automatic adhering to the current cameras transforms rotation zoom etc so you can do things like this with it it's for parallax scrolling in 2d games so you can do things like this where you can see i'm setting it up and then you can see this parallax scrolling effect that you can get with this parallax 2D node. So you can get the parallax scrolling that a lot of 2D games have. So that's a, that's a good change. And finally, we have, they are adding interactive music support. So this is where you can programmatically change the music based on things that happen in your game similar to what how wise does it or fmod or elias so if you don't you don't have to get expensive software like wise or fmod you can do it directly in godot now so you'll be able to tell it you know what sounds to play and when to play them and there's an auto advance as well so don't you do have different uh, ways to activate these i guess so yeah, so this is interactive music in Godot. So this is probably the, one of the biggest changes to this Dev5 preview. So it seems good to me. It's pretty good because I don't think Unity has it. You have to get like external uh, packages to, to to get interactive music in Unity or, or code it yourself, I guess. But this one gives it to you. To you directly in Godot. So another advantage that Godot is going to have. So that's it for today, this roundup of Dev5 changes. If you want to see them all, you can go directly to the chain, interactive change log or to this blog posting that they have. So take a look and let me know in the comments what's your favorite features that are coming to Godot and 4.3. This is Dev5, so it'll be a while before they make it to before 4.3 comes out but when it does come out these features will be there so and you can actually download dev5 if you want there's a download link at the bottom of this blog article so uh, they recommend do not use this for production it's a developer build so things can change things can break um, so maybe if you want to open an existing project with it you i would clone your product copy and paste your project somewhere else back it up before you open it with this, um, or just create a new project just, just to look at the new features. So like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.